Good morning. How are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today I want to talk to you about running it twice and really answer the question, what does it mean to run it twice or run it three, four, five times, whatever it is? And essentially, should you, if someone offers you the opportunity to run it multiple times, or should you offer someone else the opportunity to run it multiple times, understanding what that actually means and should you actually be doing it? So without further ado, let's get into it. All right. So to answer this question, we're going to go through chapter number seven from my book, Unfolding Poker. And essentially, I want to read it along with you, but also kind of expand where I think expansion could be a little bit more helpful. So chapter number seven, main question is, what does it mean to run it twice and should I be doing this? So the concept of running it twice, also known as doing business, if you've ever watched high stakes poker episodes and heard that term before, that's what they're talking about. It's actually very, very simple. So take a situation where you get it all in on a turn against a single player. You both decide to run it twice. Twice. What does that mean? What is, that essentially means is that you're going to deal out two different river cards and the pot is going to get split into two. So half of the pot is going to get awarded to the person who wins the first river and the second half of the pot is going to get awarded to whoever wins the second river. So in this situation, say the pot is 840 on a jack nine six queen turn, get it all in and agree to run it twice, which means two rivers. So half of the pot is going to go to whoever wins on the seven of diamonds. So again, the jack, nine, six, queen, seven board, whoever wins that one gets half the pot. So 420. And then whoever wins the second one, that three of spades. So again, the jack, nine, six, queen, three board, whoever wins that one is going to win half the pot again, 420, which is half of that 840. So what the, essentially this means is you can end up winning the full pot. You can win both rivers in this situation and you would win the entire 840 pot. You could win one river, lose the other, and essentially win essentially half the pot. So you'd essentially end up breaking on it. Or you could lose both rivers and end up losing the entire pot. So it's not too, too complicated. And just for the record, other terms that are related to this, running it once means you're only going to deal out a single river in this situation. So that's kind of the default typical situation. Situation. Running it twice means you're going to have two rivers, split that pot in half, and again, half the pot goes to each of the river cards. And then you could also run it three times, which means that you could deal three rivers, again, break that pot into three different pieces, equal pieces, and every single river is going to get one third. So you could end up walking away with you know pieces of the pot for sure. And just for the record, running it twice can happen in lots of different situations. You and your opponent can get it all in preflop and decide to run it twice. And that means you're going to deal out two different boards. So flop, turn, river, and then another flop, turn, river. And again, half the pot goes to whoever wins the first one, half the pot goes to whoever wins the second one. You can get it all in on the flop, decide to run it twice, and you're going to deal two different turn rivers. So whoever again wins the first run wins half the pot. Whoever wins the second one wins half the pot. So it's not too, too complicated once you understand the overall idea, but this is running it twice in a nutshell. All right, so continuing on, now you kind of understand the overall idea, but the thing you have to remember is that running it twice is not an option in all rooms, so be sure to ask the floor or check your site's rules if you're playing online before jumping into the action because you really don't want to get into a spot where you think you can run it multiple times, but you can't or you're just confused by the overall concept understand if your room, be it playing online or be it playing live, is offering that option and opportunity. And just for the record, in select spots and select rooms, you may be able to run it even more times, right? Maybe they allow you to run it three or four times. So again, ask the rules beforehand, have an idea and go from there. And it is very rare to find places that allow you to run it three, four or five times, but especially in like home games or kind of some smaller atypical rooms, you may have this option and opportunity. And one quick thing is that this happens a lot more in live games than online games in my experience. And in some live rooms, you may be able to run it twice at certain limits, but not at others. So I've played in a lot of rooms where you cannot run it twice at one, two, or two, five, but if you're playing five, 10 and above, they do offer the option to run it twice. So again, ask the floor, understand what the rules are for the game you're playing in, the location you're playing in. That way you're not kind of caught off guard, especially if you have like a greener dealer who's not 100% sure how the rules work in this particular place. This is something that you can just ask the floor real quick and they usually fill you in pretty easy. So 
essentially we've answered the question of what is running it twice or what is running it multiple times. Now the real question has to be, should we do it, right? Should we offer the opportunity if, if that's even an option in the room? Should we accept a, an opportunity to run it multiple times? Let's get into that now. So essentially the major upside to running it multiple times is that you can lower variance. So what exactly does this mean? So if you take a simple situation where you flip a coin and you guess heads, right? You have a 50-50 shot of being correct when you flip that coin and get the result. But because you're only going to flip the coin exactly one time, you're either going to win it 100% of the time or 0% of the time, right? Because it's either going to come up heads and you win or it's going to come up tails and you lose because those are the only two things that can happen in a single coin flip. But if you flip that same coin twice, now all of a sudden you're getting closer to expectation, right? We know the expectation of a fair coin is 50-50. So if we guess heads, we should win it half the time, lose half the time. But if you flip it once, you get either a full win or a full loss. Whereas if you flip it multiple times, now you're getting closer and closer to that normal 50-50 expectation. So essentially this is going to decrease your overall variance when you run it multiple times. Now on top of lowering variance, players may be more likely to get it all in with less equity when they know that you will run it multiple times, again assuming that the room allows for that to happen. Now, unstudied players think that running it twice gives them a higher chance of winning the pot, and that's just simply not true based on what we've already spoken about. If you get it in as a you know 27% equity dog, well, you're still going to win that pot 27% of the time, and running it multiple times gets you closer to that expectation rather than winning it fully or winning it zero. But it's not giving you an increased chance of winning the pod or winning a percentage of the pod. It's just getting closer to expectation. And that's the biggest thing to take away from this. It doesn't matter how many times you run it, you're just getting closer to expectation, not actually like changing the odds or the percentage that you're going to win this pot in any capacity. So if it is someone who somehow has taught themselves or, or thinks that, hey, if I run it multiple times, I have a higher chance of winning, and all of a sudden they're going to stick it in with even less equity, well, that can be a really, really good thing for you. And again, that's another one of those upsides of running it multiple times. So those are the upsides of running it multiple times, but what about the downside? So essentially the first major one is that you just increase your variance when you run it only a single time, again, running it once. And that's just kind of, again, you're either going to win the pot fully or you're going to lose the pot fully and you're not getting closer to expectation. So again, that's just kind of is what it is. If you're kind of thinking about, okay, how does this really impact things? It's really all about making sure you have a proper bankroll for this game. If you have proper bankroll management, you can weather the storms of accepting full variance. Or if you're on a shorter bankroll, obviously you should definitely want to lower your variance in a lot of situations. But I'm not really going to get into the bankroll management side of things today. If you're interested in that, you can just go to splitsuit.com slash unfold7, or I will leave a link in the description box to the article video about bankroll management. But the real biggest downside for me when it comes to running it multiple, time, multiple times is the proficiency of the dealer and essentially the speed of the game. Because when you're running it twice or running it multiple times, you're essentially taking more time for this action to take place. Even if you have a very proficient dealer, right, who understands, okay, what is running it multiple times? How many times are you guys agreeing to run it to? And are able to deal those things out, uh, pro figure out who wins the pod, appropriately break up the pot and shove the winning pots to whoever gets them. If they are very proficient, they can do this without breaking the game or slowing the game at all. If they are not very proficient, especially if they are a newer dealer, they're not really sure what the heck to do here, this can create so much confusion and can slow the game up to an absolute, absolute crawl, and that's going to be the biggest issue for me. So again, if a good, strong dealer can handle this, knows what it is, and is able to appropriately handle running it multiple times, by all means, awesome. But if you're talking about a newer dealer, especially like say you're going to the World Series and you're playing cash and you're, you're at Rio where the dealers, you know, there's tons of them and a lot of them haven't dealt for very long, don't really fully understand, this would slow things up so, so much. And I would definitely, definitely make sure to factor that in especially when you're playing slower games already. I mean, live cash is already very, very slow, but if you're playing like PLO, you know, live cash, if you're playing big O, 
live cash. I mean, these are already so, so slow, so few hands per hour that if all of a sudden you're losing a couple hands in value because you're trying to run it multiple times, it might not be worthwhile even for you, yet alone the other people at the table that are just like, oh, can we please just move this along? This sucks. So essentially pay attention to this. And even more so if you're offering to run it multiple times to someone who clearly isn't going to understand what that is, right? Newer players just sometimes maybe have heard of the concept, but they don't really know where they're all in and their brain's really fueled up with adrenaline and they're not really thinking totally clearly. So you have to like calm them down, explain what running it multiple times is. It can be extremely, extremely slow, and then they might not understand, and then if they you know, win half of the pot, they may get confused. If they win none of the pot, they get super confused. So essentially, you very quickly have to discern how proficient is the dealer? Could they even handle running it multiple times? Who is the opponent that I'm getting it all in against? Do they understand what this is? Do they understand clearly what running it multiple times is? And if the answer to either of those is no, probably don't do it. And essentially what I oftentimes suggest is that if you're in a live game and you know maybe you offer to run it multiple times because you can and your opponent says, I don't really know what that is. Say, okay, we're just going to run it once like we normally do you know, typical, typical default run out here. And then after the hand is dealt, then explain to them what it is. So that way, the next time that opportunity comes up, they can make a more informed decision and you're not slowing down the game in the immediate, trying to explain it to them and trying to get the dealer to do it and trying to make sure they don't feel any sort of negative way, <clears throat> depending on how the exact results run out. So that would be the way that I typically approach that situation. So my general rule of thumb is that if it would take more than a minute to explain, negotiate, and facilitate facilitate running it twice, I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to run it the one time and I'll explain things or, or figure out things in between hands or after this hand later. So kind of keep that in mind. If you're playing online and your room allows running it multiple times, well, clearly the software can handle all this in like 0.5 seconds. So it's not a problem. And I would just default run it twice or run it multiple times. But again, not all rooms offer that by any stretch of the imagination. And I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but essentially I've never seen this option for a tournament ever. I've only ever Ever seen this as a cash game offering and again not all cash games online or live offer this so keep that in mind this is this is really not like a tournament thing and just for the record when we're talking about all of this we're just talking about the upsides of running it multiple times and the downsides of it you have to make the decision of are you going to run it multiple times given the option given the opportunity to do so i'm not telling you you have to or you don't have to i'm just sharing here's the upside here's the downside here's what i do and you have to make your own choice accordingly now, there are some players that feel it's better to only run it once to apply max pressure to a player with a shorter bankroll. And essentially their concept is to apply maximum pressure to put their bankroll at risk. And if they run bad in a few key pots, that can work in their favor by applying this pressure. But there's a couple of things that you really want to think about in, in situations if you're one of those players who's thinking like that. One is that good players use bankroll management, right? Just inherently, they're good players, they're thinking about their bankroll, they're trying to avoid high risk of ruin situations. And as such, they're probably not gonna find themselves in spots where they're putting their bankroll at risk a large chunk of the time. And as such, this kind of maximum pressure to really hammer in on their bankroll just isn't probably going to be applicable, again, to good players. Now, the other side of the spectrum are recreational players, but if a recreational player loses their bankroll, they're probably going to leave poker altogether, or they're going to play far less. Just because think about it, recreational players, they don't keep like a large dedicated bankroll for poker. They kind of just have a few buy-ins allocated mentally or, or even maybe physically, but essentially once those buy-ins dry up, they're probably going to be done with poker. They're going to slow up and wait to rebuild a little bit, and they're just kind of going to start exiting poker slowly. So because of that, do you really want that? Do you really want recreational players to ride the full variance train as aggressively as possible and exit faster? I don't think that's the best long-term idea. And then number three is that a player who would fold their equity share incorrectly, unless given the option to run it multiple times, likely has massive, massive leaks in their strategy, right? If, if, if you can apply this pressure and deny them the option to run it multiple times and they would make poor decisions mathematically because of this, I mean, this is just one insignificant way of exploiting your edge against them by denying them the option to run it multiple times. 
So I don't want to really turn this into like a full conversation about like conservation of the poker ecosystem and thinking about how to make sure that recreational players stick around longer, but by the same token, like denying a player an opportunity to run it multiple times, it just rarely has the intended effect that people claim it does. I mean, even if you've heard like really high level pros talk about the concepts of running it once or twice, they're saying, you know, I run it once against the other pros, but I'll run it multiple times against Rex. It's like okay i guess but like is your reasoning really strong or is it just some like arbitrary slightly incorrect thought process based on the math that you have so uh, again bad players are going to lose their money over time and introducing them to an earlier exit in poker simply because you know you made them ride the 100 zero train faster i don't know let them actualize their equity share get closer to expectation more they stick around longer i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing overall but Again, you have to t keep in mind what are your thoughts on this and then make a decision on what you're going to do. And then finally, to put a bow on this whole thing, I'll just answer the question once and for all and kind of already alluded to the answer here, but do I run it twice? And, and personally, yes, I will definitely run it multiple times. If you give me the option to run it three, four, five times, I'm probably going to default accept that as well. I definitely enjoy lowering variance and getting closer to the natural expectation of the equities once we got it all in, so I'm totally fine with that. And I also find running it twice can definitely keep the game a little bit more social, and especially because this is typically more of a live thing that is very, very important at the end of the day. And kind of related to that, and I think I alluded to this to, to an extent, but I either decide to always run it twice or run it multiple times against every single player at the table, or I'm not going to run it twice against anyone in any situation at that table. Because again, this is heavily a live thing. Live games, it can be very, very socially awkward if you're open to doing business against one person but not willing to do business against another. It just kind of creates like an awkward social riff. And I just don't find it very helpful at the end of the day. And again, live play is heavily about making sure that the game feels inviting and isn't like cold shouldery to people for no reason. And I just don't see any like massive, massive benefit to doing that. So because of that, I either decide, okay, I'm going to run it multiple times in all situations, meaning it doesn't matter if we got it all in preflop and I have aces, or if we got it all in on the turn and I have the draw against your big hand, I'm just going to either always run it multiple times or never run it multiple times during that session against all people in all situations. Now, all of that being said, again, this heavily, heavily goes back to the time factor. So again, as a pure default, yes, I will run it multiple times. But as we talked about the time stuff earlier, if it's going to take too long, if it's creating complications, if it's creating situations where people aren't really sure what the heck it means to run it multiple times, they aren't understanding why they're getting pieces of the pop and not full things, it just, if I am fearful at all that it's going to slow up the flow of the game and slow up the time of the game. Again, live sees so few hands per hour as is, yet alone when you're talking about complicated multiple time running and all that kind of stuff. If I'm fearful of that at all, I don't think the dealer can handle it, I don't think the player can handle it, then we just keep it normal, run it once, and go forward from there. No problem. That is obviously the default. But as if it is possible, given the time, given the dealer possibilities, given the player's understanding of what's going on, then I can totally be on board with it. Now, there's pretty much only one person who I really dislike it against, or just in general when it comes to running it multiple times. And it, again, I kind of alluded to it earlier. The person who will run it twice in some situations, but not all, right? They run it twice when they're the one that's behind, but they're not going to offer the option for their opponent to run it twice when they're the one that's ahead and they're, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, when they're ahead and their opponent's behind, they don't want to run it multiple times, but when they're behind, they want the option to run it twice. Again, don't do that. Either decide, hey, I'm always going to run it twice or I'm not going to do so. Very, very simple. So, other than that, again, this is essentially just a variance reducer. If you, your room or your game allows it and the time allows for it, cool, do it. If not, eh, maybe not. And even if your game does allow for it and the time would be okay and you don't want to run it twice, that's totally fine too. Just make the decision to always do it or never do it. Don't be the person who does business sometimes with some people but not against everyone. I just don't think that does the greatest things possible, especially in a live environment. 
So that is essentially running it twice, running it multiple times, even running it once in a nutshell. So again, this was from chapter seven from my book, Unfolding Poker. It's available as an ebook, as a PDF, paperback, also available on Amazon as a Kindle and also as an audiobook over on Audible. If you're interested, check it out. If you have any comments or questions about it, let me know. And by the way, if you like this kind of video where we're kind of going through a chapter from a book, either a book that I wrote or I co-wrote and kind of hacking it apart and maybe doing a slightly more tangential exploration like we did today, let me know. I'd be happy to do some more of these kind of videos, but if this doesn't really feel right to you, it's kind of, eh, I don't know if I want this in the future, let me know that as well. I'm totally open to being flexible with video types that we do around here. But ultimately, this is running it once, running it twice, running it multiple times. Hopefully that helps answer some questions for you. If you have any other comments or questions related to this, also please don't hesitate to leave a comment. And also make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of material. Otherwise, I'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. In the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.